Okay, I was just making a video and I had to stop all of a sudden. It just stopped. And it was right when I was about to say what the Lord said. So I was in this big church, right? Picking up this part two. And I look around and the Lord said, look around, right? And I looked around and the Lord spoke to me and said, see all these people? He said, they'll all fall away. He didn't say some of them. He said, they will all fall away when hardship or persecution comes. And I remember I was young in the Lord. I, that was a, that was like, to me, that was false doctrine. You know, I mean, I had just, I've been serving the Lord maybe two years and I had already been taught that, you know, the minute you believe you're saved and, and everybody's saved, everyone's a Christian. And, every, and I was just like, but I believed what the Lord said to me more than what I believed what they were saying. And I, I remember looking around and realizing, and God was giving me a revelation. As a matter of fact, I got that revelation. That was right at the time that I had just given everything I have away. And God brought me to a whole new level of, of revelation. Remember I was saying, I've given everything I have away more than once. The first time was in 94. I didn't even have a toothbrush. That is when this happened. I was in the church. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I clearly heard the voice of the Lord. He said, look around. And I remember being offended by certain people, like certain Christians. Like they seemed lukewarm. Like there was this guy who always had a girlfriend. And he was always walking around talking like, please pray for me for I've fallen short and I've sinned. And I'd be like, oh, really? Yeah, okay, I'll pray for you. And he'd be like, what? And he said, remember that really, remember that really pretty girl I was hanging out with? I sinned with her. And like, and like he was just, he, he didn't come to me actually repentant. He wanted me to know that he nailed that girl. That's basically what he, his purpose, his real purpose was. And that guy had been with like three or four different girls since I'd known him. And I'd only known him for like six months. And I was celibate. I was like, I remember telling girls, no fear, I have to be celibate. All these girls I could have been with. And I could have. That was in college. And I remember this guy, the Lord spoke to me about him. He, he's not, he's not going to make it. And though he claims to believe. And then, okay, so buying gold refined in the fire is the same as what Jesus said in the parable of the ten virgins where he said while they were on their way to buy oil the bridegroom arrived and the virgins who were ready went in with him to the banquet door banquet and the door was shut and I was supposed to get the I, I, I must have miscopied that because I meant to copy more basically to buy oil for your vessel is the same exact thing that Jesus said to the rich young ruler. He said, sell your items, sell your possessions, sell your little idols that you worship. Get rid of that stuff. Get rid of the TV. Get rid of all your little distractions. Then you'll have treasures in heaven. And those treasures in heaven, then you'll have oil in your vessel. Then you'll have, um, then you'll have attained to a greater resurrection. Now, this is the most important thing. I want to tell you guys the way to guarantee your salvation. There's one way to guarantee your salvation. And nobody ever talks about it. And it's not believing God for pre-tribulation rapture. That's almost the opposite. The, almost the way to guarantee you're not going to make it is to believe God for a pre-tribulation rapture. And then when it doesn't happen, you become part of that group that's part of the great falling away. Part of that group that's part of the rebellion of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Part of that group who gets mad at God and says, Well, I thought the rapture was already supposed to happen. And they get all mad at God. I won't serve the God who would make me go through the tribulation. And the reason is they never stored up treasures in heaven. And the treasures, they had their treasures in this earth. And where your heart is, your treasures are. Where your treasures are, your heart will be also. And where your treasure is, your heart will be. And where your heart will be is where your treasure is. In other words, even if the rapture were to start to take them up, and they're going up in the rapture, they'd be like, wait a minute, I forgot to feed Fifi. Wait a minute, I just bought a brand new car. 
as they're going up in the rapture, wait a minute, I just got married. Wait a minute, I just started a new business. And the Bible even talks about that, how, how there was the wedding banquet and the servants went out to invite people to the wedding banquet. And one said, I'm sorry, sir, I can't make it to your banquet for I have just purchased two yoke of oxen and I need to go try them out. And another person said, I'm sorry, sir, I cannot make it to the banquet for I have just gotten married and I'm on my honeymoon. You know, stuff like that. You're going to miss the rapture. You're going to be a grape that's part of the harvest, partially harvested up, and then all of a sudden, slap, you get slapped back down because you said, wait a minute. And you looked back just like Lot's wife. Don't be that. If your treasure is in heaven, if you store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, the best way to guarantee that you're going to make it, are you ready? Now, this is, now listen to this. Revelation 20. I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. Okay, side note. Attaining to a greater resurrection and obeying God and laying down your life in this world and giving of, of your most value, po valuable possessions will put you in a place that when you get to heaven, attaining to a greater resurrection does include being one who's given higher authority and the authority to judge. Not everybody who goes... See, when, you, when we go to heaven, some are given palm branches, some are given a harp, and some are given a, thor, a, a special throne that's set up just for them to be a judge and to give, given authority to, be, to, to judge. Three different levels that we see in the book of Revelation. Revelation 7, 9. Some were given... Palm branches. Revelation 15, 2. Some were given harps. Okay? And then Revelation chapter 20. Some are given a special throne to sit on, and they're given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its its mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first re resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him forever, with him for a thousand years. Okay, And it says the second death happens after a thousand years. Remember I said the only way to know for sure you're going to make it to heaven is to survive that second death. That's when you have eternal security. All the teaching on eternal security is put on hold right now until the second death. When you survive the second death, then you have eternal security. But the best way to make sure you make it for eternity is to be beheaded for your testimony and for holding to the truth and for holding to Jesus. And for being faithful in the face of the mark of the beast. Let me read it again. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received the mark on their foreheads or hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And then it, it makes it sound like they're the only ones who, come to, who, who are resurrected from the dead. Look, the rest of the dead did not come to life until a thousand years were ended. That's what it says. It makes it seem like only those people who are beheaded for their faith or put to death for their faith actually make it. I'm just saying. You need to, if you want to be sure, instead of believing God for a pre-tribulation rapture, you need to be in prayer about laying down your life for the Lord and standing firm in, in the face of the mark of the beast and the, and the, and the, um, and the image of the beast. All right, and for for uh, people, you know, I believe. Listen, the Lord's been speaking to me about Chelsea Bedell. How she still she doesn't know. She doesn't know the future. She doesn't know the hardship that's coming. She thinks it's a pre-tribulation rapture. And I'm telling you right now, if you knew your Bible and if your eyes were open and if you break your alabaster bottle and lay down certain things of this world, then your eyes will be opened and you will see. And you will know that it's not a pre-tribulation rapture. But 
trying to explain that to someone who's not willing to actually lay down their life and constantly comes up with reasons why the scriptures don't mean what they say. Jesus wants us to completely overcome this world and come out of this world. That means if you're holding on to anything of this world. That's why Jesus said there's one thing you lack if you want to be perfect. Do you want to be perfect before the Lord? Start giving all your stuff, your most valuable things. I'm just saying, and they can't do it. Because they love this world. They love the things of this world. They can't give up their daily latte. They can't give up their, their daily, you know, um, manicure and their, their weekly hairdo and their, um, you know, their expensive nice car. And they're constantly believing God for more. Many of them do the opposite instead of, and it's the end of the age. The time has come. The time has come to lay down your life before the Lord. I'm just telling you, may the faith of God in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the lies of the devil right now. I rebuke the devil right now. I rebuke the devil right now in Jesus' name. And I rebuke the lies and I pray false teaching must go and the truth must come. And I pray God will give you at least enough revelation of the truth to realize that, that some people are bound by the things of this world. You're bound by your, your car payment. You're bound by your mortgage. And all that stuff, the Bible says in one hour, all her wealth is going to be burned and destroyed and burned with fire. And when that happens, that's the hour that all the virgins wake up and realize. The wise virgins realize, hey, good thing I've already laid down my life before the Lord. And I have all these vessels full of oil and treasures in heaven. And I've already attained to a greater resurrection. That's when the foolish ones wake up and realize oh it's not a pre-tribulation rapture because this doomsday event at midnight is world war three and it's russia and china who come in and take over and russia and china and iran and turkey and islam come rising out of the sea at the same time you have black lives matter and antifa come rising out of the earth and there is no u.s government to to it's a nuclear war man it's China and Russia. I'm just saying, Revelation chapter 12, Revelation chapter 13. And this happens before the rapture. And I can prove to you that it... That, no, you know, you can't prove anything to people who, who... If they're blind, if they're blind, you can't prove anything to them. I could go to a blind person and say, You see? You see? And they'll be like, I don't. No, I don't. And you can say, but it's colored pink and it's got blue and it has a strawberry right there. And they don't see it, even though it's right in front of them. That's what it means to be blind. And I'm telling you, many, 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 many are blind. That's why they read a scripture and they don't see the very next verse. And then they make all their doctrine on one scripture and they throw out... There's a guy, I was watching a guy who was teaching a pre-tribulation rapture. He had to go get a Bible version from like 1585. He's like, this is the Bible version of And then he read it and it said something. <laughs> it's like, you can't take an actual valid Bible version. You have to go back to... to. In other words, he'll read this NIV. I don't like what it says. Throw it out. King James Version. Eh, don't like it. Throw it out. And he went through all these versions of the Bible until finally he found one that was written in like 1535. Some old, old school version of the Bible. And he says, oh, this is what I believe. Yeah, this is it right here. I'm just saying, the, if you don't tell them what they want, that their itching little ears are going to keep searching and rejecting the truth and searching to hear something that that they like. And that's why, that's why Chelsea Bedell would cut a scripture in half and only quote the first half of it. There is no eternal... Well, I, I, I can tell you this. I feel totally eternally secure right now. But I can tell you, if, let's say, World War III happens, all hell breaks loose. And I decide, oh, what the heck, I'm going to go get me, uh, you know, a couple of prostitutes. And every night I'm drinking and partying because all, the disaster is so bad. I'm just saying, it's the second death. That after the second death, then you have eternal security. If you die as a martyr, then you have eternal security. 
And you won't have the strength or power to die as a martyr unless you've lived for the Lord and laid down the things of this world.